Okay, I'm hit recording progress. You should see it popping up in your screens and say yes, that you agree to be recorded. Welcome everybody to the 7th of March, 2024 Supply Chain and Trade Finance Hyperledger uh, Special Interest Group. Looks like uh, have a number of people online live here today, so that's great. Thanks for joining and also, we're glad that you're, if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, and hopefully you have some good stuff here for you. Um, we're not in the interest of keeping the technology smooth. We are, I'm not putting up the all are welcome kind of chart. I put in the uh, chat here, you can click on the link. Uh, here, the link for this actual session, you can go to the general meetings from our uh, wiki page. So just, just get started. As always, all are welcome. We're glad everyone's opinions, thoughts, ideas here. That's great. This is open. And because of that openness also from an antitrust concern, please do not share anything that is confidential or that nobody should else should know about here since this is an open session. So with that, um, let's see here. We have a number of, let's see, if you haven't had a chance to listen to Leanne Kemp from Everledger, from uh, back a couple of weeks ago, that's up on YouTube. You can go ahead and listen to that. And you know, I can't remember who are who do we have in two weeks uh, talking. I can't remember. Let's uh, go look. Brew Finance. Brew Finance. Okay, so kind of a trade finance kind of story that'll be uh, talking um, in a couple of weeks. So with that, let's see here, uh, Jeff. I'm going to turn it over to you. Just gonna Jeff and and I guess I should I should before I turn it over to Jeff here. Um, sorry, Jeff, I I, I jumped the gun. <laughs> We've been thinking that we wanted to have a little bit more technology component to uh, what the what the special interest group brings to the table here. And the good news is is that Jeff here has more of a technology background than either myself or Alicia. Uh, he can actually still code where our coding days are, are beyond us. So in this case, Jeff has put together a nice little demo of supply chain trade finance with digital twins. So we thought it'd be very interesting for people to see. And, um, and maybe this can be a basis or maybe even better a springboard for future work for um, not just the folks that are listening today, but also others as we go forward here in 2024, 2025, et cetera. So with that, Jeff, thanks for doing the work to uh, build this, this little demo here and some of the ideas of actually uh, using blockchain in a, in a digital twin environment and seeing how some code and some things actually work underneath the covers. So with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thanks, Tom. Thanks. Just, a quick, just a quick check. Oh, did somebody ask something on the, I just heard somebody. Oh, never mind. Okay. Um, you can hear me okay? Oh, yes. I have some I have trouble with this brand new uh, microphone. So as Tom alluded to, yeah, today's uh, presentation is going to be on supply chain digital twin. Uh, and there is a mock-up of a blockchain. We'll call it a mock-up blockchain that I wrote in Python. I actually wrote it for some other folks to demonstrate NFTs and an artist that I know is interested in NFTs. But this is also a blockchain. So um it's a python program and i will get a little bit into the technical aspects of it from an overview i won't go down to the line code i think uh i can't see who was all on this call but um you'll, you'll get a two flavor flavors but the the crux of this is going to be about uh supply chain digital twin and um i think people are familiar with digital twins and they're often talked about in the frame of mechanical equipment or a process like an oil refinery where they have taken a, a, a modeling software, let's, let's use a jet engine as, a, as an example, and this is where you often hear about supply chain, or sorry, uh, digital twins, is they will put, put the, put the uh, jet engine together, they do um, studies on it, they look at wear and tear, their expectations are it has so many life, so many hours of, before it needs to be uh, maintained, and so, they will put that together and they'll and they'll put that in some form. It could be software, maybe not software. And on the actual engines themselves, on the planes that we all fly on, they'll have devices on there that are IoT that will then give out information to that 
piece of software that says, here's the actual wear and tear on this engine, engine such and such, or it, again, it could be another piece of mechanical equipment. And what they're getting then is what's the real time effect and use? Is it mimicking what we expected? If not, maybe the maintenance on that engine needs to be moved up on the schedule. So um, a lot of mechanical stuff, a lot of process uh, units, so forth, and refineries, food manufacturing plants use digital twins, even some farmers use them because they, again, they optimize what they think they should see and they get real time data that comes in and that tells them whether or not they're accurate or do they have to move around schedules. Supply chains also, though, can be thought of as a digital twin, and that's now coming out more in the literature um, where you can mock up the entire supply chain, make it a digital twin, optimize the, the time frame, optimize the capacities that you see in, in the supply chain, and then get real readings that come in from IoT devices and so forth or manual entries, and they can see how the supply chain is performing. And if you look at the screen, um, this is what our presentation today is going to be. I'm going to give information about how the digital twin is put together, um, some of the technologies that are used. We're going to use a company. Um, we're going to call it a fictitious company, although there this actually happened. So there's, I, I took a I took a situation of supply chain and I, I changed it a little bit. Um, but if you if you look at the screen, I won't go through all the bullet items, but um, it's going to focus on what a supply chain digital twin looks like. And in this case, um, well, I'll talk about it in a minute. But uh, this is a supply chain that needs to be produced by a company. Who has an opportunity to purchase something and sell it so there are supply chains that are a circle where there's planning there's production distribution sales forecasting and then it goes back again to production and, and it's circular this is not a circular this is a little bit more tougher for a company to do and again this is where a digital twin can can come in and help a company understand a, a small supply chain for a particular instance how well it's performing um again i got a screen here and i have i took some of the, you can see the reference on the bottom about what a digital twin really looks like and uh yeah i talked about some some of this already but um again a digital twin twin will replicate the assets so in the case of a supply chain versus a compressor or an airplane with different parts supply chain has got components it has trucking firms it's got warehouses production facilities it has uh uh, sourcing. These are all components of a, of a supply chain that is similar to components of a, a physical device, such as, uh, I go back to the engine. So they, they do correlate to, to a degree. Supply chains don't have the planning aspect to them, and you'll see that in a minute. So <clears throat> what I'm discussing here is what are the advantages of using blockchain technologies? You know, and when I say blockchain technologies, I'm talking about um, crypto payments, smart contracts, different, different components that we're familiar with with blockchain. And I'm listing them here. Hyperledger Fabric is, is a blockchain technology, of course, that does provide the capabilities that you see in these bullet items. It does have interfaces to AI. As a matter of fact, the, the software, my desktop software, I'll show you in a minute, also has interface to AI. But the smart contracts, and also something that we're gonna to touch on is about trade finance. And give an example of what trade finance does in a supply chain, which is key, um, especially for mid to smaller, small uh, companies. But, uh, but you can look down the list there and see, these are always advantages of, of uh, supply chain that's gonna like, utilize a blockchain. So there are many supply chains out there that do not use blockchain technology. They are ledger-based, they are their in-house legacy systems. They do not have the advantages of, first, first of all, smart contracts, which can do partial payments, can do cross-border cross payments. Um, that, that intelligence in a supply chain is lacking when you don't use a blockchain technology. So we're going to do it to, to demonstrate this again. We're going to uh, use a fictitious company called AJ Coffee, which sources. And again, you can apply this to a lot of commodities, especially. But this is a company that has opportunities that come up once in a while to to purchase rare commodities. In this case, it's a unique coffee grade that's come available on the market. Um, this is again not part of the the supply chain, it, it is in a way, but we're not gonna model that, but 
they've got an opportunity to buy a very rare coffee that's in high demand in luxury hotels, businesses in the US. They've got customers that are craving for it, and so they have their hands on it. But this, the coffee has to be collected from the producer, and it has to be in the United States, ready to go in a warehouse in a certain time frame. We'll see that time frame. And this is where, when this occurs, a, a company such as this AJ Coffee, there is not a supply chain in place right now to do this. So they have to construct that supply chain quickly through contracts, through technology, is, is almost a one-off to uh, meet this this one uh, uh, high margin coffee that they're going to sell to their customers. So reliable supply chain is critical, the ability to track what's occurring because there's so many moving parts, anything from farmers ability to load pallets to trucking in Ethiopia, trucking in the United States, ocean vessels, warehousing, all those pieces are needed in the, all the contracts have to be signed so that that coffee arrives under certain conditions, environmental conditions, not spoil it, it's the US for sale. So uh, the blockchain technology that's going to be used in here in this digital twin is going to employ at, at the blockchain itself, IO, IoT devices to enable that to happen. Absent that, there's no real-time tracking of all the issues that can occur, whether it's weather, whether it's traffic conditions, problems going across the ocean. And so I'll show in here how the digital supply chain twin can uh, assist with that greatly. Again, um, why, so we can talk about supply chain digital twin, but why showcase um, what a blockchain looks like? And I think a lot of people are familiar with the blockchain. I don't know how many people on the call have seen a blockchain and whether or not you've been out to Ethereum IO, whether you've been out to blockchains, or, sorry, Bitcoin's blockchain. Um, you'll see in the demonstration, we have the slide deck. We also have a, a running program that will show you a blockchain in action. It's a desktop blockchain, but it is getting feeds. And um, you'll see the fields that are involved. And it gives you a, a good a good idea how smart con contracts actually operate in the blockchain. Uh, again, what the fields look like. Fields and blockchains are very similar, whether it's Ethereum, Solana, Bitcoin. The fields that are used to store uh, transactions are very similar, and those are key in this demonstration because you'll see how IoT readings come in and so forth. But that's a real key here is to be able to give a visual of what occurs on a, digi a digital twin supply chain. Again, it doesn't have to be in a blockchain, but you'll see a, a huge advantage to having this blockchain. It can be permissioned. It can be permissionless. Um, that would be up to the vendor. Um, Wondering at this point, does anybody have any questions on digital twin supply chain I haven't covered? If not, I'll I'll move on a little bit to uh, keeping in mind the time, a little bit into uh, technically what you're going to see on the screen. Hey, hey, Jeff. This this is yep. Tom. A couple couple questions. I just want to make sure. So in the in the scenario you're setting up, I think the key thing I heard is that AJ Coffee just they got lucky and they found this source of coffee beans and now they got to figure out how do they get it from here to there kind of thing. Right. And so the, this firm uh, scours the planet coffee growing in cocoa regions to find rare coffees. And so okay. these are legitimate coffees. There is a coffee called Geisha from Ethiopia, which I think is $50 a pound. Um, there's coffees in Panama that are $10,000 a pound. So these are very limited. It has to do with almost like wine growing conditions. This company you know, contacts organizations, farmers one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and when they do get an opportunity to get a certain lot of it, then they look at their customer base. Are they interested? Yes. And they now have to put a supply chain up, depending on where in the world this is going to occur. Mm -hmm. There's coffee growing regions across the planet. So this could be, again, doesn't even have to be a commodity, but there are situations where you have running supply chains and you're producing a commodity or something and you're you're planning it, you're selling it, uh, and then you're doing more planning. These are one-offs. And so there's 12,000 pounds of coffee available. It's in a particular farm in a particular place in the world. And they have to get it to a certain place over a time frame, and they have to now construct a supply chain. Yeah. It, and I guess the, the next f flavor for that or kind of taking that is the, the key point, I think what you're trying to say with the digital twin is that this creates a model 
of what that supply chain could be. Yeah, and I'll get into that in a second about so the modeling. You just look past, yeah, there you go, model. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, and got then it. You see, this is this is the model that'll be produced, and then it results into this, and then uh, we'll see that in action um, off of the blockchain. Beautiful, beautiful. So this next screen here is the actual blockchain. It's just a PowerPoint, but we'll see this running. Um, and again, this is a, a blockchain. It's a little bit different than some of the commercial ones because I'm showing more information on this blockchain that you would normally see. For example, over on the right, the blockchain itself, when a new block is added, you don't really see that occur, whether it's on Ethereum uh, or Fabric. Um, but I'm giving some information what's going on behind the scenes with some of the data, some of the data fields that occur. And you'll see how important this is when we start running it, when you start seeing things like smart contracts. Jeff, when you, say, sorry, when you say on the right, really, do you mean the pink block? The pink block, yes. Okay, thank you. Just to clarify. I'm sorry, I have a little bit of trouble seeing it because all the stuff that's scrambling on my screen for the presentation. <laughs> so it's the pink block. Um, I'll get into that in a second. But um, this is what was created in Python. And so um, this, is, this is the screen in the front. Again, I don't know how, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you the components that were used. Those are menu items. And again, this was, there are wallets on here. There are NFTs, you can tokenize um, art assets, things like that with this blockchain. I demoed it to somebody that, that's interested in doing that. So this has actually been used more than the supply chain, but uh, it's been altered for this demonstration. Um, because it's a desktop, I'm just going over some stuff real quick. The blockchain is actually kept in a file, which there are some smaller blockchains out there in the world that do use files uh, for their history rather than a database, uh, I'm not certain why, but in this case, this is a small blockchain. So there's JSON files that are used and you see a picture of the blockchain up on top, of wallets and the different currencies that are in the wallet. Um, people that are interested in Python out there, um, what components of Python were key to build this? One's of course dictionaries, fits very well into blockchain instruction. Uh, and then lists of dictionaries uh, without those data structures, it'd be almost, there'd be 10 times as much effort to try and create a blockchain. And one of the things you can see over on the top right is fields that go into a transaction in a blockchain. That is very common. If you always wonder what Ethereum is storing or the Bitcoin is storing, if you see up and there where it says transact, that's a, that's a dictionary. That's actually a list of uh, dictionaries, but, um, you're seeing all the addresses, the values, things called, if you don't know what gas is, it's a cost to run it on here, the coin that was used. And then some of those other fields you're seeing down there are some of the data you're gonna see. So if you haven't seen where, what kind of data goes into a transaction on blockchain, it's very similar. There are some that have a little bit difference, but not a lot. And then we did talk about JSON. Um, if you're programming in the 21st century, you have to know a lot about threading. And so, um, Threading is running on my desktop right now, but it stopped. And so when that thread runs, again, I'm on a desktop, it slows my whole computer down, but um, I have to read a lot of things in to run that blockchain. So um, it's kind of a little technical word on the bottom that indicates um, the fact that when you're on a laptop and not a server, uh, the threading doesn't exactly work as one would intend. So, but again, I've got threading in there. If someone was curious about some of the data that comes in, it's all handled in threads. Uh, the graphical interface again is a is a commercial product that's distributed for free. Uh, it runs the software once the graphical inter interface starts up. Um, you're actually under control of PYQT5, um, and I just got some information up on top how it's imported, and then it's a class, so it's there's a constructor that um, starts that up, and then. Of course, uh, Python has classes and objects, so the blockchain is a class. And you can see some of the functions in that object listed there, which again are very common to blockchains. And then um, the wallet, which I, I'm not going to show in this demonstration, but the wallet is also a class. Um, there is a way of sending currencies to people within this program. So that's just my little bit of uh, the technical aspects, not you want to pour the code out on top of somebody, but um, just some of the constructors and some of the uh, ways this was built. Um, any questions out there at all? 
I thought I heard a question. That's okay. Um, so what we're going to do is on um, this slide is uh, and going forward is a demonstration of how this supply chain digital twin would work for us. Mid-sized firm has a opportunity to buy some very expensive coffees from around the world. And so one of the things that you look at supply chains, and this covers all supply chains, is um, if you want to develop a digital twin, there's things that you have to do up front. One of them is you have to look at where, what are all the components, where are the assets of that supply chain. If you look at an airplane, it's got a lot of different parts, which they call assets, the landing gear, the tires, the engines. Well, the supply chain, the components and assets are things like, in this case, the farmer, farmer's warehouse, their acreage, the loading operations, truck lines, ports in Ethiopia, ports in the United States, the ocean lines, anything involved transporting that coffee to its, its final delivery is, is considered a component. So uh, you go through and you look at all your components, and then in those components are supply chain processes. Now, uh, one of the things I don't have on here, I was thinking about adding in the end, was um, we're going to show trade financing on this and how that works. And so that would also be a loan, uh, a fintech company would actually be considered an asset. So underneath the supply chain processing, you see about securing the fin fintech loan uh, for that coffee. And that, again, is uh, a process. Also, within all those assets, there are things that in the supply chain I think of as rates. How fast can the uh, coffee be loaded? It may not be one day. It depends on what kind of crew they have. It depends on the weather. Um, of course, transportation, how many hours a day can they drive? What are the rates or the routes? And so you take all the components and assets that are in the supply chain, and then you add the processes around and you start producing what, what we see as a, um, a, a digital twin. And so from the work that on the slide you're seeing here, what you end up with is something like this, part of the colors. This was used for something else. And so um, it's just, it was, a, it was a changeover of symbols I'm using also as a demonstration. But what you're looking at here is actually all the assets involved in the supply chain. So the top is, that's a, that's a real farm in Ethiopia that produces that coffee, that rare coffee that produces. So you have your contracts across these firms that you see. Uh, the ocean shipper isn't really shown yet, but there's a reason why. And then you see the capability. So when you're doing a mock-up, of a supply chain and you're saying you've got <clears throat> a delivery date of end of March uh, and you're in February, mock-up portion of the supply chain is, can we actually get that coffee to that customer or customers in the time frame that we need? And so what you have to do in your contracts is you've got to go back to each one of these individual, we'll call them assets, and, and what is their capability? How long does it take to load coffee? How long does it take a, a truck line to get from Ethiopia? And you go out and you look at contracts, who's the best in class at this, and you look at the risks around it, and you end up constructing that supply chain. And what you end up with is something that looks like this that I think we've all seen. And here's the, here's the chain of transmit, transfer of that coffee from that farm into the warehouse. So ABM warehouse is an actual warehouse. I see the misspelling down there. It's an actual warehouse off the port of New York. And so um, that's where AJ Coffee stores, stores its products. Uh, and there's operations that occur there where it's bagging, grinding, so on and so forth. Um, and so what you're seeing here is the classic um, supply chain. Now, if you have this all mocked up out on paper on the PowerPoint, you can see here uh, all the way down to the bottom, and, and I'll go back up here for a second, is uh, you look all the way at the bottom, you'll see that based upon the capabilities that we've agreed upon for each one of those assets or suppliers, uh, we can do this, maybe with some risk involved inside, inside of this, but based on the capability of each, um, it's a go. And so your, you tell your customers, yes, we can do this. Now, um, once you have this all in place, by the way, I was going to backtrack, this one does have some of the risk that's involved in, in some of this, and we'll see some more risk come up in the demonstration. So um, if you're AJ Coffee, what you can do is decide to utilize a blockchain IoT to track this to see, is there any of these risks that pop up? Is there anything that happens that we uh, 
remediate, what risk do we have behind it? And so automation is the best course of action. So what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to flip over to this, and this is the Python program. So I'm going to start this up. And what you're going to see now, I have, I have interjected myself into this where I've got this stopping to explain some of the, the course of action that occurs and some of the live data that comes in. So um, what you're going to see on screen are transactions that come in. Now, these are blockchain transactions. Now, these don't apply to us. The ones that do apply to us, you'll see in a minute, are you'll see the hex addresses, and I've got some dots, and those are the ones that you'll see. And so imagine this has all been, uh, those contracts have been signed. Um, we're ready to go. So AJ Coffee and I was going to start using this blockchain technology. So the first thing that's occurring up here is there's a request through the AI that AJ, AJ Coffee uses to go out and find financing to purchase this coffee. And so there are fintech companies that will do this based upon, in this case, a coffee uh, firm that's got commodity in a warehouse. And this is often called warehouse trade. Um, or sorry, warehouse receipt financing. And then in two weeks, there'll be some more detail on what this actually means. But essentially what's happened is a company called SoFi, which is the real company, has looked at AJ Coffee and said their risk profile is good. They've got an asset in a warehouse uh, of coffee that they're going to leave in place until this is done. And so AI has gone through interest rates, uh, capabilities of fintech and has selected SoFi as this is where we're going to get our, our uh, money from. We're not going to go and get a loan. We're going to use our assets. And so down the bottom, you're seeing $200,000. So a transaction has gone into the blockchain. SoFi has transferred through crypto $200,000 into AJ Coffee's wallet. So that's where we are right now. So I'm going to close this. Um, and you also see some screens here, and this is giving a little bit more data to each transaction that you'll see occurring. Um, I was checking the timer, sorry. Um, and it's 9% financing, and there's an expectation of 12,000 pounds of this coffee that's, that's going to be produced. And so this is the case where AJ Coffee is right now. They've got the money. Now they're talking to the farmer. And what you'll see in here is the ledger. So in a blockchain transaction, this is what they look like. You can see the address is also a little bit on the fields over here. You're seeing the, these are the transaction hashes that end up being put together and then hashed again into a block. But here is a, a ledger agreed to purchase this coffee from CPO uh, co-op for $13 a pound. And it says it's substantially grown and the farmer has an ESG certificate, which they will transfer over. So again, if the blockchain is open, uh, and of course this is sped up. The other thing I mentioned this may go over a couple of days, but um, here's the contract that's been put, that's put put in, and uh, there's still a bit of demand certification is required. It's, there's a smart contract that's going to be put into place, and the smart contract that what's going to do is smart contracts come into blockchains as transactions, whether it's fabric or ethereum and so what you're seeing up right now is a smart contract just been has just been thrown into the ledger into the blockchain uh, for this cost one hundred sixty three thousand dollars roughly for that farmer for twelve thousand six hundred pounds of coffee and in that contract of course are our dates and so it's going to be three days to load it um will be paid as it's loaded iot devices will uh, determine how much has been loaded per day and one third of the purchase price is going to be held out until it's completed in three days and there's a certification that, that um, it, is, it is the copy that they say it is. And one of the things you're going to see on here is the contract is going to be signed to, to a company to do a certification. And uh, okay, I believe Block just got formed because of the transactions that went. <laughs> okay, so you just saw Block it produced and it's a small block I, i've got it so it doesn't uh, hash forever um but uh, that transaction that went across is the transfer the, the esg certificate from the farming uh, farmers and so um so coffee's coffee's now starting to be loaded and um 
AI has popped up and said, well, we have a problem. And so I'm going to flip back this for a minute. Um, so this producer has the capability to produce 5,500 pounds of coffee they can load it into a, a container. And so they have to average a little bit over 4,200 pounds a day to meet that three-day contract. What's happened here with IoT devices is the first day they loaded only 3,154 pounds. So AI has come up and said, uh, we have an issue. Uh, we're not going to meet the three days at this rate. And so what's happened is AI has transmitted requests to the farming co-op to say, we need guarantees. We need that we're going to meet the three days. We have a truck coming in. We want to do the demerge charges. We have this massive supply chain. What do we need to do here? And so the coffee company, the uh, farmer has agreed to put more manpower on there to meet the three day requirement. The other thing AI has done, again, this is part of training sets of AI, has looked at the weather forecasting for the next day and it thinks there's a possibility of rain. And so um, the weather then wait to the end to find out we didn't meet the three days with IO and AI and blockchain in between. Um, it's popped up immediately and said, we have an issue. What are you going to do about loading more coffee over the next couple of days? And so what you'll see down the bottom here, I'm going to close this, is this is the partial payment for just 3,104 pounds. They have not paid them uh, all of the contract. They only get paid as they get loaded. And so um, the loading is occurring. And again, IoT is tracking it, and now they've loaded up uh, only 1,420 pounds, so it's even less. This is weather condition related, and so we're now getting squeezed a little bit. And so it's being monitored, this loading, and here we've got 5,400 pounds loaded now. So the additional staff has come in, um, they've, they've increased the loading. And um, I can't see on the bottom, but if you look down in yellow, you'll see more detail than I can see about what's actually occurring on these transactions. And here, 2,500, uh, roughly 2,600 pounds were loaded. And as a result, the 12,615 pounds have been loaded in the container, and it has met that 224 date, which was here. And so and through that interaction between AI, IoT um, devices, and again, the AI, AI was a supplement to IoT devices, way up front, it showed that there was going to be a problem loading meet that three days. And so corrective action was taken. Uh, the, this entire transaction could have got with, with the vendors could have got killed right there if it didn't meet. One thing that I want to put up front is uh, and here's by the way the final payout. So let's go in those ledgers. If you see this go, every time I have it actually stopped so you can see some of the payments. So that's that one third payment that was held out. Um, is um, ocean liners um, only come every couple of weeks, and so um, you have to meet that otherwise your your sales are over. So what you said just saw come up was a contract for the port. I think it's pronounced Djibouti in Ethiopia. It's the biggest port. And there's a contract then now for to, to hold the coffee. Um, a transaction, which is a digital bill of lading for $1,200 to a company called Metro Lines. And so Metro Lines is on site. They're loading that, send one big container on that coffee in a wrapped container. So a smart contract's been put up with them. Again, that's these are all ledger transactions in a blockchain. Again, a normal blockchain would run much faster than this, but again, I'm slowing it down for this demonstration. So we're, we're at a point in this extensive um, supply chain where the truck has now got it. And so uh, it's flipped back here. We are at this point here. Um, and here's the, there's our capability. So there's the distance to the port. It takes 21 hours, they can only do eight hours a day. And so this is what we're tracking through here on the next IoT device. So the IoT device is actually on the, the container for two reasons. One is the distance is travel. Also there are coffee, this is a commodity. So there are humidity and temperature conditions that they must meet. And so uh, they've gone 96 kilometers, now they've gone 202 kilometers over the next day. And uh, they should be, Unless there's a traffic issue or a breakdown, which has some risk, um, they should make it to that Ethiopian port. And there you see they have on 226. That's the date it was intended. So we're still on schedule. 
it has met the uh, temperature and uh, humidity requirements. So they will now be paid. You'll see the transaction down on the bottom. There it is right there, last one, the $1,200. So that their ledger entry. And not only is this blockchain mutability really showing through here in the fact that these transactions you cannot change, but it's showing time frames and um, this immutable can't change. I, I just, I just, uh, and the new immutability of a blockchain you really see here because this is all key for contracts and so forth. So the port's got the coffee, they've taken it off the truck. Um, again, there's a storage requirement, so they're showing what that is. Now it's waiting to be loaded on an ocean liner. Um, again, as transactions come in, this is our, our blockchains where new blocks are created. Um, so you can see the contract that. Um, Overseas shipping from Dubai to, to Newark. And AI has popped up again. So, for, <clears throat> and this is very topical. So, the original contract was signed with a company called Mediterranean Shipping Company. Um, and AI came up and said, for risk, that's things that are occurring in the Red Sea right now with Hamas uh, and so forth. Um, they don't trust this Mediterranean Shipping Company. They, AI with all the information it has says Maersk is the least risk. If we're going to continue to go through this Red Sea, this, which is the only way it's going to meet that gate requirement in New York, it can't go through around the Horn of Africa. We're going to switch it over to Maersk. Uh, they seem to have a much better handle on when to go across, where they go. Um, they believe that mitigates the risk. So AI has actually come up and said, well, let's do a different shipper based on data that we have, recent data some analysis AI has done, and let's use MERS, MERS uh, shipping for this. So what you're seeing down there, you just saw the transaction went into MERS at the bottom here. Uh, it's about another $1,600 to ship through MERS, but the decision has been made to send it to them. So MERS has got it, the coffee right now. Smart contract was put in now to MERS. And you can see some of the detail where it's gonna go, the humidity conditions, the cost. Again, a smart contract. Let's use smart contract entry. So this is the, this is the storage contract. You're seeing here that in New York when it arrives, so before it gets there, the contract has been wasn't already put up, but the transactions were not put in yet. And so that's one thing I want to make clear is uh, they're not doing this on the fly. They have these contracts, but what you're looking at is the ledger entries that go in to track. Um, where it is, they put a um, uh, permanent ledger transactions as far as what's occurred through this entire uh, supply chain. So uh, IoT has now indicated that that our uh, coffee is moving. So the warehouse has got it. They're moving that coffee, and here it is now. It's, it's on the dock. So this way, it's got to it's got to get to that dock by um, a certain date so that the uh, Vessel can pick it up. And now uh, Maersk has got it. You can see it's, this, this container has been loaded on the vessel. So we're all good there. Again, March 1st, if we miss March 1st, then it's two weeks later and we have a real issue. So um, this is just a digital bill, bill, bill lane that comes in uh, on the ledger. And so that's stored on here. And again, some of the gas costs, I don't know if you're familiar with gas costs, when gas costs involve documents, they get expensive on blockchain, storing documents on blockchain. So you'll see IoT rings are small. These gas fees are tiny, these are costs. Um, not much data with an IoT, but when you talk about bill ladies and so forth, they, they get expensive. So uh, what we're getting, we're getting now is IoT is coming in, showing the conditions in the container and some GPS coordinates of where is that ship. So um, it's a 22, roughly 22 day transfer across the ocean. Obviously in this demonstration, <laughs> I've cut those out just to show that this, this is tracked, the humidity, temperature is tracked inside that, that uh, container that's holding all that coffee. I just have a few more before it arrives. Um, and if anybody knows about coordinates, those are actual coordinates going all across the ocean. Um, so um, 
think there's one more. Um, so here on uh, the 23rd of March, so it's, it's made the 22 days, it made it through the Red Sea, and the container is being offloaded by Maersk, and it's now going into the, the warehouse freight yard, which is in uh, Newark, New Jersey. They call, it's called New, I think believe it's called the New York port, but it's in Newark. So we're still tracking it. Um, here's payment now to um, the, the trucking firm that's going to pick that container up out of that warehouse. And move it across to um, this is the port warehouse over to AJ Coffee's warehouse for processing. So that's you're seeing that contract go in. That's a full payment. Um, and what you're seeing here is the coffee's now been loaded into the warehouse, and the AI AI's component related to this and related to trade finance is, is always looking for opportunities from a trade finance standpoint. Again, uh, looking at marketing conditions, it's, it's mentioning that there's an advantage that uh, maybe we want to uh, borrow against the coffee. Again, it's a recommendation. There's no action that's occur here. The AI is sending this out. Again, communications isn't just on a blockchain. This can, be, this can be emails. This can be mobile phones. But I'm showing how AI is, tr is keeping an eye on everything that occurs and uh, giving even recommendations out on good interest rates. Maybe we want to continue to uh, do more trade finance against some of the the, the coffee that's sitting inside there rather than it just sitting there. So um, the trucker has pulled the container now from the warehouse and we're back in the US. It's 11 mile trip to go to this ABM warehouse, which is in this area called the Sunset Industrial Park. AI has come up again and said, uh, based on current traffic conditions in New York area, um, let's reroute it. Let's take it. You know, it's three miles longer. Let's go on a new route. Um, maybe road construction maybe there's some other problems so it's come up and said let's redo a route tell tell jb hunt that we're going to follow this new route so that's been approved um through ai logistics and the truck is now moving and again we have um you're saying it's going five miles so far to 13 miles or again we're tracking this container so the truck is moving and uh, so we're, we're tracking those conditions. So um, it's now gone seven miles and it's met those conditions. The IoT has come in and it's, <clears throat> for some reason, it's still at seven miles. So the truck has stopped on this new route. Again, we're looking at this humidity. So <clears throat> AI has directed us into on this uh, supply chain into another route, but yet this seems to be stuck at seven miles. Um, it's still stuck at seven miles, but what's happened here we notice is the container has gone off spec compared to what's written in the supply in the smart contract. So the temperature has gone up to 20 degrees centigrade, 75 percent humidity, while this thing is sitting there. Now this container has its own um refrigeration and humidity control with an engine on it so there's something strange occurring here within seven miles um so again there's an alert that the truck has stopped um it has now made it to the warehouse and humidity is, is, is high on it the temperature is still high so um there's something that's um gone wrong with this container. Let me just um, so is that the, it, it, <clears throat> it is getting better now. Uh, humidity is high, but um, the temperatures come back down. And so we are now at the warehouse uh, where it'll be offloaded. But this all, by the way, this all occurred through the same day. So we have, so the, the warehouse has not collected that container. And so we are all still, we have some flex in the time. So we're, all, we're still good. And so some things AI has helped us with, of course, was that at the beginning was the, um, the request for manpower to load. Um, and um, some of the things such, such as rerouting with MERSC, that was a big advantage with AI. Um, 
when you look at this right here, this is again by, uh, in, in the supply chain using these technologies as smart contracts. So the mark, smart contract has come up. And it's actually put a transaction in to say we're not going to pay the trucking company JB Hunt because it, it, the shipping conditions exceeded what we were told it, and it's outside the contract. So um, further inspection, and, and this is data that goes into transactions, is it came into the warehouse, they inspected it, and the seal has been broken on the container. Um, I'll keep going here. What actually happened here is uh, the companies use companies use AI for a variety of reasons. But one of the things you always have to make sure you have in there is um, the proper training sets. And the company is using AI. What it did is it had logistics in there. However, it, it rerouted that container into a very dubious area of New York. And so what actually happened is this is information they got back from the truck driver is that truck was stopped at gunpoint there's a container on a on a truck going through a very a nasty neighborhood nasty area and they broke open the container so it was exposed to new york conditions weather conditions but also it got broken over what actually happened though, when they broke that container open they saw what they saw there were coffee beans they had no interest in the coffee beans so they they, re, they just Close the door on it and let the truck go. Example of, and I use this example here because AI, um, signing AI, using it in a company, lining up the, uh, the AI vendor, the cloud provider, the AI provider, that's one function and that's the easy part of AI. The hard part, and you'll see more and more of using AI, is how do we use it? Where are we going to use it? And what data do we have to train that model? So if AI was probably trained in with different risk conditions. They may have come up and said, you know, the traffic is a little bit more um, lengthy on the trip. We're still within one day. Um, may use a little more gas, but we can't send it through some area that are higher crime that's too higher risk. And so this is a case where, a, I won't say AI fail, but um, uh, companies need to really know how to use AI before they deploy it because it could cause problems. Again, it, it helped in most of these cases. Um, but there's an example of a, of a problem with um, using AI in a, a supply chain so, such as this. So we're almost at the end here. So the two, this is just um, because these things are IoT tagged, that container, um, they're uh, going to put 2,000 pounds in coffee bags. Again, this is for their customers. So AI is still running um, this coffee, even though it's in our own warehouse. And uh, uh, 2,000, sorry, 2,000 pounds is going in for grinding. The rest is going to go in bags. Um, and right now you're just watching, what you're watching now is, as far as the supply chain pieces is, is, this is done, the blockchain is just running. Um, but what you're seeing normally, uh, we just see keep popping up here is, this is what they, they look like when you're running a, a blockchain, you'll see data come in. These are high numbers on a purpose, but um, and you'll see blocks being formed. I don't think I have anything else to add on, on here. Uh, but again, just an example of um, how a um, how a digital twin works for a supply chain that's quite complex because of all the moving parts and the fact that this is a supply chain that isn't proven out. It's not running and running and running. It's something that they have to bring forward. Very profitable to get it over here. It's it's uh, fourteen dollars with all the costs upon it. Its retail sale is fifty, so it's high margin. It's worth the effort. Um, you can see how, how effective the blockchain IoT were with an AI to make sure that this coffee delivery made it in a very tight uh, prime time, time frame with uh, conditions to keep the coffee greens bright. And that's pretty much it. I don't think any questions anybody has, whether it's Python or uh, supply chains. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. I'm going to turn this off. So you got you got a little cr crime story in there also as you're going through a truck jacking in New York City or New Jersey, maybe. I don't know. It is. Um, it is something that happened. <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> It wasn't Thanks, actually man. coffee. It actually wasn't coffee. It was something else. But um, it, that is a real-life example of 
the pitfalls of companies delving too deep in AI right now because there are very few companies that have the data training sets available to take in all considerations when they make calls such as that. So, um, but you did see the AI advantage, the IO, especially the IoT. Uh, without IoT devices and, and, and a blockchain ledger to view and accept these, um, right off the bat, the coffee grower would not have met the port for three days. Now your risk is one day missing that ocean liner coming in. And those ocean liners do come in only two to four weeks in that port. That's Ethiopia's biggest port. So even though this is a uh, mock-up of a, a, situ a, a transaction that with, with a, a commodity, it's very realistic. That coffee is, is out of Ethiopia and uh, you can't have an existing supply chain because that may never come up again and your supply chain may, your coffee may be in uh, Mexico or Panama on your next opportunity. So uh, it's a flexible supply chain and that's something that companies deal with today. But other supply chains, again, they're not easy and they do use IoT devices, but if you're, if you're making a uh, Robusta style coffee, just use coffee as an example, and you're, you've got production farms that's being produced, you've got planning, that supply chain is running. Not saying that those are that easy either, but this is a little bit more difficult when you have to frame the assets for ports every time in the process and keep checking back what's their capability. Yeah, good. I got I got one question, and then we'll we'll throw throw it out there and see what last questions we have. Um, my question is, what's what's the most work, or where where's the biggest set of work? to set up all the digital twin. Cause I like what you did in, in terms of, you know, all the detail of how things are moving along there and how it could play out going to, you know, either AI or using the blockchain to then enable something to happen, whatever, you know, whether it's- Well, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be similar to AI, it's gonna be AI use, usage, it's gonna be that back end. So um, the digital, digital twin is based off of this right here um, in this, contract, going out and getting the contracts. Now, again, I'm talking non technical but getting the contracts, understanding their capability, and can we meet this time frame, or what can we do to meet this time frame? because I've got a very big profitable um, transaction here, which is all that coffee to, to uh, different suppliers, um, putting that together. As far as once this is put together, these become uh, just a name a blockchain let's take fabric uh this just becomes now entries into fabric and so contracts go in um some are smart contracts some aren't and the capabilities are put in then you tie your ai inside uh, again these are things that fabric provide um that blockchain is now available and so you don't have to build a blockchain you just have to get your transactions into the blockchain your iot especially your your ai and then you may have a person, uh, again, on, you know, some of those IoT devices, you're going to see maybe once or twice a day. So you get a person, whatever role that you want to have, and they can monitor through the blockchain. Um, I think I took the program down, maybe I shouldn't have, but there's a way to search then on, uh, as those transactions come in, there's actually something called a chain ID. And you can go and query the, um, the blockchain and say, give me all the transactions on that chain ID, and I'll just listen chronological or order all those different transactions that you saw so you can get up to dates uh, okay. information on blockchain but it's really just the back end it's like ai you have to do a lot of work on ai to make it work properly um same here is contracts with all these warehouse now again depending on how big the firm is but um uh, ai was critical on the ocean shipper and it was critical on this uh famous farm we talked about in ethiopia so that's the hard part Okay, good. After that, you good. just sign up for a blockchain. You can build your own if you want out of fabric <laughs> or use Ethereum, go. but uh, a lot of people are using fabric. So, uh, yep. uh, Kaleido comes to mind. Call Kaleido up and say, look what I have. Look what's going to come in. You get your, your IO for Kaleido and you're using you're up on fabric. Any last questions here? We've got two minutes left. If there's uh, a last question going once. Going twice. There are a couple of things I uh, I I I have actually loads of questions. Uh, very impressive, uh, Jeff. Very impressive. Uh, Thanks. I, I'm wondering uh, among uh, many stuff uh, about data. You know, like like for AI, where where does it feed on? Uh, does it 
I mean, usually data on blockchain come from oracles, right? Uh, does uh, AI or can AI uh, get data from oracles? Does it scrape the net? Yes. The, the, what, what does it do? Yeah, it gets it from Oracle. So that um, can I get this? Uh, let's see here. Uh, so uh, yeah, it gets it from Oracles. Um, in, the, in the IoT, the IoT has to have a target. So the IoT will have a target. Um, but Oracles are anything that the blockchain can pick up or AI can pick up. You know, give you an example right here. This is a, a, a quick way of or an Oracle. This has gone out now, and it's just these are up to the second prices of all the cryptos that I plugged in here. So this is an example of an Oracle. And so AI is no different than what I just showed you on the screen here. It just goes out through an API uh, and pulls this, this stuff. And this is the latest um, crypto prices that are that are out there right now. So um, it, the data comes through oracles. Um, the AI feed itself, you're talking about the AI, whatever technology you're using, open AI, let's give an example. Um, you can you can be your training data sets have to be in there, otherwise it's making decisions on nothing. Um, IoT the readings will then come in to that data source for that for the AI, and that it will come through as an oracle. Okay, so you're reading it to an oracle. Good. In, in Christos, I know you said you had lots of questions here. I, I'd ask you since we're at the top of the hour, Jeff, you're you're good with uh, getting emails, right? Or yep. okay, good. So. Um, okay, and great, Jeff, we'll put your presentation up with your email on it so that people can get a hold of you. And also, it's easy to get them on Wiki, too. So, Christos, thanks Thank for the, the questions there. Yeah, Christos, thanks. For, I'm getting a lot of questions around the Python um, from LinkedIn. So, people are curious about using uh, Python, one of the Python uses. Uh, okay. Putting a desktop, putting it together a blockchain just in uh, Python has got a lot of interest. So, good. Okay. Good. Great. Thank you all. Thank you all. So Jeff, thank you very much for uh, sharing here. Good, very good scenario. Appreciate that. Like the detail in the steps so that everyone kind of gets what's actually happening there within trying to build this digital twin of components and processes there. And then it was great how you added in, hey, here's the places where we're, we're using the blockchain for value, or here's where we're, we're using AI for value, et cetera, kind of along the lines what, Christos, you, you were just asking there. So with that, let's stop. Again, Jeff's open for questions here. Maybe we'll see where this, this goes. Uh, if you have some ideas, you know, what we, how we can springboard off of this, use this for the future uh, to further demonstrate some of the value within supply chain and trade finance, uh, that, that is awesome. So with that, enjoy the rest of your day, whether you're listening live right now or listening recording, and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks when Brew Finance is going to talk. So thanks a lot. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you later. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look for this Thank on you. YouTube shortly. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye.